There you are. Hello. Hi. How nice to see you again. So nice to see you. So I wish we could be together physically, but we're here in different locations. I'm here at Christie's and DVF. Where, where are you? I am in my studio in my house. And uh, I'm happy to be here with you and introduce you with the book, Own It. Last night, I read your book in the bathtub, cover to cover. I felt two things. First, I learned so much. I thought about so much, so many different things. But then I thought, like during COVID, I haven't done anything except for like maybe cook and work and watch my children. And you wrote a book. So can you talk about what this year has been like for you and what writing a book during COVID is like and how you were able to be so productive during this time of such surrealness? So what happened with this book is that I uh, fade on the uh, publisher came to me about a year and a half ago. And they say, you know, we do, we do so well with these tiny books and people love to quote you and you are a very wise woman. And would you do that? And, and at, at the time I had launched the In Charge movement. And so I thought, yeah, let's do a book on In Charge. When people always ask me, what did you want to do when you, grow, when you were growing up? And, and I thought about it and I said, well, I did not know what I wanted to do, but I knew the kind of woman I wanted to be. I wanted to be a woman in charge, which means a woman who is independent, who could pay her bills, and who can basically have a man's life and a woman's body. Then later on, I became in charge because of a little dress and that gave me all the things I needed. And then people would say, who do you dress? Who is, your, who is the DVF customer? And I would say, it's the woman in charge. So in charge has always been the umbrella over everything I do myself and what I do for others. So two years ago, I decided to launch the movement because I thought a lot of people think that being in charge is aggressive, right? And aggressive towards men. And that isn't at all what being in charge is. Being in charge is first and foremost a commitment to yourself. It's owning who you are. You own your imperfection, they become your asset. You own your vulnerability, it becomes your strength. So then I realized that owning it was really the secret of everything. You could apply it to your five-year-old. You could apply it to your husband, you could apply own it to anything. You get diagnosed with a disease, own it. You have a car accident, own it, which is really about not being delusional. So then I decided, okay, I'm going to call the little book, own it. And I started to write, and I remember the first sentence, we cannot choose who our parents are. And then I would go on and on. And But then I wrote it as a prose, and I found it, a little bit condescending and a little bit boring. And then I decided, no, I'm going to um, write down all the words that matter a lot to me. You see, for example, this is the letter A. I wrote all the, the words that speak to me. And then I decided to write this book as a dictionary as a little dictionary. So sometimes there are definitions, sometimes there are little anecdotes, but, but everything links to own it. And then I started, and then COVID happened. And I found myself in my house, in the country, and therefore I had more time to write. But more important than that, I realized that this book was gonna be a fun gift, uh, a fun book with a lot of wisdom, but a little light and on the, on, the, on the verge of frivolity. And instead, because of COVID and because we were all alone, reflective, completely taken by surprise to what had happened, it became a little bit of a more serious book. What role do you feel that women are playing in the, in the art world today? 
and I say art world, but I, I guess what I really mean is the world in general. And, and are we in a moment like never before where women have their opportunity to really own it? It, it goes both ways. We are making progress. You know, I'm a feminist, very much of a feminist, with as many M's as you can put. Uh, because I Me was too. because I was a feminist for my daughter's generation, it wasn't that important. But I could see for my granddaughters who are now in college, for them it's really important to be a feminist. So I think feminism has come back to fashion, so to speak. So that's a good thing. And there's no question that there's a lot more women in, I mean, you know, if you think of so many black women mayors in America, you know, there are more women in, in boardroom, but it's still very limited. And it still feels like a concession, oh, we need a woman. Women will save the world because women are stronger, because women are more adaptable and all of that. But unless we program AI, intelligent, artificial intelligence, unless we program women's book, women's character, women's stories inside the artifi artificial intelligence, then we will have lost it forever. So it, it, we cannot take it for granted. It is very important that women code. It's very important for women to go into tech because the world is going virtual and therefore we cannot lose the feminine energy into the virtual world. It's so important, the, the tech component, and I feel like so many industries are finally embracing technology and COVID has accelerated the progress of so much of that in the fashion world, in the art world. But I think right now more than ever, it's become such an important part of our role. And you're absolutely right. We, we, we need there to be women in those positions um, in power and in technology to move that forward. Speaking of women, obviously one thing that they can do that no one else can do, which of course is something I always knew, but was such a powerful thing to read in your book, uh, children. You, of course, are such an influential mother and grandmother. Children are so um, important. Can you talk a little bit about what that means to you? I paid a lot of attention to what I was gonna write about children because my stricter, my strictest uh, are the children. What page are you on? Uh, 29. 29, okay, I'm gonna read with you, okay. Okay, children, I have seven children counting my five grandchildren. As all mothers do, I want more for them than I want for myself. I love them unconditionally and respect them, but also admire them admire them, watching them go into life, owning who they are. As a young mother, I was very worried to be too strong and have an overpowering voice. So I made sure to give them, my children, plenty of space to express theirs. I can say that I certainly succeeded in that, as I am now often lovingly belittled by them. <laughs> However, my dream of them becoming who they wanted to be is fulfilled. Voila. What would you say to women today who are aspiring to be artists or collectors? Women artists has always been hard. And I remember myself, I, I can remember thinking that maybe men were better artists than women. I remember thinking that. And I don't think it's true, but I think women have been accepted to be artists for so much longer. But women writers are incredible. And you decide to be an artist because you have the urge. You decide to be an artist sometimes because you are in pain. I mean, to be an artist is, is usually, I mean, there are very few artists who paint or who write about happiness and um, you know it's it's the art is 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 an emotion you know that's the difference between design 
and art. Design is utilitarian, and, and art is emotion. So the art comes from within. Yeah, good advice. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being here. Thanks for talking about the book. If you don't have the book, buy it, ideally from an independent bookshop. Read it in the bath, uh, on the subway, in the car, on the train, wherever you are. It fits perfectly in your bag. And it's a nice gift, and you can also buy it on dvf.com. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you.